Hi everyone, welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. Here we are going to see about digital electronics interview questions. So the question is given only two XOR gates, one must function as buffer and another has inverter is a question which we have over here. The answer is Tie one of the X or gates input to one and it will act as the inverter. Tie one of the X or gates input to zero, it will act as a buffer. So the next question. We go to tell some of the applications of buffer. If this is the question which has been asked by the interviewer, so the answer is They are used to introduce small delays. They are used to eliminate crosstalk caused due to inter electrode capacitance due to closed routing. They are also used to support the high fan out. So these are considered to be some of the applications of buffer. So the next question is Give two ways of converting a two input NAND gate to an inverter. In order to convert two input NAND gate to an inverter, the answer is short the two inputs of the NAND gate and apply the single input to it. And the second way of converting it was we need to connect the output to one of the input and the another to the input signal. So these are considered to be the two ways of converting two input NAND gate to an inverter. Here we go with the next question. The question is, why is most interrupts active low? The answer for this is, if we consider the transistor level of a module, active low means the capacitor in the output terminal gets changed or we can say that it's getting to be discharged. These are happening or occurring based on low to high and high to low transition respectively. You can see the interrupt which is active low over here. So the next question. Differences between D latch and D flip flop. D is nothing but data. So D latch is level sensitive whereas flip flop is edge sensitive. In terms of flip flops that are considered to be made up of latches. So you can see the depiction of how the D latch that is data latch and, and how the depiction of D flip flop is all about. The next question is, what is meant by multiplexer? Multiplexer is nothing but the combinational circuit that selects binary information from one of many input lines and directs it to a single output line, where n is considered to be the selection line. Here we have the next question, what is a transducer? Transducer is nothing but the one which converts a physical variable to an electrical variable. You can see how the transducer is all about over here. So this was one such question which has been highlighted and often asked in Dell, Lenovo kinds of interviews. Here we go with the next question. Describe offset error for a DAC that is nothing but digital analog converter. The answer is more or less the input voltage is required for the first step than what is specified. So this is the short and crisp answer in order to describe the offset error for a digital to analog converter. The next question as follows. What is the conversion time of a flash converter? 
The answer is the conversion takes place continuously. Here we have the next question over here. So what is the major advantage of the R by 2 R ladder DAC as compared to a binary weighted input of DAC that is digital analog converter. So the answer is quite simple but still you need to understand the logistics which is there behind these. The major advantage is nothing but it uses only two different resistor values. Let's move on to the next question. So what's the accuracy of a digital to analog converter? D by A is nothing but digital to analog. The representation will be in terms of capital D divided by capital A. So the answer is, it's nothing but the comparison between the actual output of the converter and its expected output. We have the next question. What's the difference between PLA and PAL? PLA is nothing but programmable logic array whereas PAL is nothing but it's abbreviated as programmable array logic. PLA is a programmable one or we can say plain and in terms of PAL, it has only programmable and plain. So this is the main difference between the programmable logic array and programmable logic. What's the difference between PLA that is abbreviated as programmable logic array and PAL that is programmable array logic? The difference is nothing but the programmable logic array has a programmable or plain and a programmable and plain while the PAL that is the programmable array logic has only programmable and plain. So this is the difference between these two. We shall look at the next question. What's the difference between microprocessor in terms of DSP that is digital signal processor or we can say digital signal processing. So what's the difference between microprocessor systems and other digital systems? The answer is quite simple. The digital system follows a programmed sequence of instructions that the designer specified. While answering these kinds of questions you must understand the logic. Whenever these questions are posted in interviews, you need to answer in a short and crisp manner. Here we go with the next question. We got a statement kind of question over here. The process of designing a synchronized counter that will count in a non-binary manner is primarily based on what? So this is the question based statement over here. So the answer is external logic circuits that decode the various states of the counter to apply the correct logic levels to the JK inputs is the answer. We have the next question over here. Which of the following statements does not describe an advantage of digital technology? When the question is asked in such a way, the answer must be you can simply say the values may vary over a continuous range. Here we go with the next one. What does parallel transmission of digital data requires? The parallel transmission requires as many signal lines between sender and receiver as there are data bits. So this is the answer. So the next question is as follows. 
What is one relate to disadvantage of serial transfer? It's quite simple. The disadvantage is it is actually slow. So okay, we we have the next question. Latches constructed with NOR and NAND gates tend to remain in the latched condition due to which configuration feature? So the configuration feature we got to find out. The answer is cross coupling. So for the latches constructed with NOR and NAND gates tend to remain in the latched condition due to the cross coupling configuration feature. The next question is, when is a flip-flop said to be transparent? The flip-flop is said to be transparent when the Q output follows the input. Here we have the next question. In terms of VHDL, that is VHSIC hardware description language, In terms of VHDL, how is each instance of a component addressed? The answer is a name followed by a colon and the name of library primitive. So, in terms of VHDL, each instance of a component is addressed based on the colon and the library primitive of the name. Here we have the next thing. Given only two XOR gates, one must function as buffer and another as inverter. So in order to make this possible, we need to tie one of the XOR gates input to one. It will act as an inverter. Similarly, tie one of the XOR gates input to zero. It will act as a buffer. Here we have the next question. How to achieve 180 degree exact phase shift? So to achieve this one, never tell using inverter. You should not tell the term called as inverter. DCM that is digital content management and inbuilt resource in most of the field programmable gate array can be configured to get the 180 degree phase shift. So the answer is FPGA. The next question is as follows. What is the significance of RAS and CAS in SDRAM? The abbreviation of SDRAM is nothing but Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. The SDRAM receives its address command in two address words. It uses a multiplex scheme to save input pins. The first address word is latched into the DRAM. DRAM is nothing but dynamic random access memory. So the first address word is latched into the DRAM chip with a row address store. store. RAS is nothing but row address store. Shortly after the RAS and CAS, CAS is abbreviated as Central Authentication Service. So shortly after the RAS and CAS strobes, the stored data is valid for reading. So this is the significance of RAS and CAS in FDRAM. Here we have the next question. How can you convert an SR flip-flop to a JK flip-flop? In order to convert this one, by giving the feedback, we can convert Q equals to S and Q equal to R. Hence, the S and R inputs will act as J and K respectively. How can you convert the JK flip-flop to a D flip-flop? In order to convert this one, we need to connect the J input to the K through the inverter. So the next question is as follows. In a 3-bit Johnson's counter, what are the unused states? The answer is 
2 power n 2n numbers is a 1 used to find the unused states in Johnson counter. So for a 3 bit counter it is 8 minus 6 equal to 2. That is the unused states which is considered to be 2. The two unused states are 0, 1, 0 and 1, 0, 1. We'll move on to the next question. What's the difference between RAM and FIFO? RAM is random access memory. FIFO is first in first out. The answer is FIFO does not have address lines whereas RAM is used for storage purpose. Apart from that, FIFO is used for synchronization purpose. When two peripherals are working in different clock domains, then we will go for the FIFO. So this is the major difference of RAM and FIFO. So this question was highlighted in Tik Mahendra. Hope you got some ideas in terms of the interview tips. Thank you for watching this from GTEC.